What's up everyone? It's the Cyber Moose here and hello and thank you for watching this video. So today we're going to be creating rules for a PFSense firewall. Alright, so most firewalls are very similar in the way that they allow the user to input written rules. Um, let me go ahead and close that. Alright, so uh, before inputting rules on a firewall, you must have a plan as to what traffic you want to allow and what traffic you want to have blocked on the firewall. So after knowing what you need done, you can go ahead and input the rules into the firewall. So before we start here, I'm going to go ahead back to the main screen here, where the system overview is. And from here, we're going to go to firewall. Right under the firewalls tab, we're going to go to rules. Now, uh, I, I think I mentioned earlier, but let's go ahead and reiterate this, that a lot of firewalls have the are pretty similar in the way that you input the rules. Um, there's always going to be that rules tab somewhere on the... Uh, interface of your firewall. So, you can see right here on the left corner there's a wide area network setting and there's a local area network setting. Uh, local area network, I think these things are pretty self-explanatory. Um, all traffic within the local area network, these are where the rules for those are going to go. And for all the rules in the wide area network, pretty much anything going in and out of your internal network out to the internet is going to be put over here. So down here you can see that there is a green play button and that means pass. That means that the rule that you wrote is pretty much uh, written to allow traffic to go through the firewall. There's going to be either a little red X if that is a rule written to block traffic. And there's going to be the little uh, yellow X which is going to be reject. So the difference between block and reject is that block will silently drop the packet it will not allow the traffic to go through. Whereas reject will drop the packet as well, but it will send back a message to the user allowing them to know that the packet was rejected, it was blocked. So right here, there we have the little blue indicator with the little I, that is to log packets. So if there's a specific type of web traffic that you want to log that um, keeps on being denied, you know, let's say for example, someone's going to an adult site, and they tried about five or six times. Well, how are we going to know they tried about five or six times? We're going to go to the log, and it's going to show us there that this specific person somewhere inside your organization or behind in your house network somewhere sent so many requests out to this website but was blocked every single time they attempted to do it. And we can go ahead and see the time, the date, and all the other stuff in the log as to when they were doing all that stuff. So let's go back here to the LAN area real quick because there's already a rule written up here okay uh, this rule says right here it's a pass rule uh, just before we move on anymore I want to go ahead and read this out to you so it says hint rules are evalu evaluated on a first match basis the action of the first rule to match a packet will be executed this means that if you uh, use block rules you'll have to pay attention to the rule order everything that isn't explicitly passed is blocked by default so here's the important part everything is blocked by default so the moment you set up your firewall and you try to go to google.com you're probably not going to be able to google.com because there is no rule written inside the firewall saying hey allow someone or allow anyone who's trying to google.com to go to google.com which is pretty much web traffic allow web traffic right right here you can see in the wide area network and local area network there's no rules it says no rules are currently defined for this interface so because there's no rules the firewall will automatically block every single request, every traffic request, or any traffic that goes through the network is going to be blocked unless we write a rule that allows it to go through. And that is pretty standard amongst a lot of firewalls. Um, you know, sometimes if you buy a commercial firewall or you buy a custom-made firewall for yourself, sometimes the, uh, sometimes the people that create the firewall, the vendor, will already have rules preset in there, but it's best to always follow the rule set that you need for your specific use. So, Let's go ahead and start by creating our first rule, uh, wide area network rule. So let's go ahead and create a rule that will allow someone inside the network to access google.com. Uh, you know, internet traffic, which is pretty much port 80 traffic, HTTP, is pretty much needed amongst and across all uh, businesses, houses, you know, everyone needs to access the internet. So let's take care of the most important parts, right? Let's allow people to access the internet. Well, how are we going to do that? Right here on the right side, you can see that there's something called add new rule. Uh, right here is actually delete a rule. We don't want to delete any rules because we don't even have any rules. So it says click the plus button to add a rule. So let's go ahead and add a rule. Okay, so right up here, 
we have action. So what do we want this rule to do? Uh, do we want this rule to be blocked? Do you want it to be rejected? Or do you want it to pass it? Okay, so obviously we said we wanted to create a rule that's going to allow um, people inside of the house or whoever's in your household to access google.com or any website, right? So let's go pass. Let's pass it, okay. Um, so if we go down here, we're going to disable this rule. The only time you're going to press disable this rule is let's say you created this rule and you don't want to necessarily delete the rule, but you don't want the rule to be active. You're going to go ahead and press disable the rule. This is not important for now. Okay, so interface. So the interface that we are uh, going to be paying attention to most of the time are either going to be a local area network interface or a wide area network interface. If we have two or more local, lo local area networks, um, let's say we have two separate routers and you have about different departments, you're probably going to be uh, writing rules between apartment A and apartment B. For example, let's say you have an accounting apartment and department and you have a, uh, a security department or an IT department. You don't necessarily want traffic, let's say you don't want web traffic or a specific type of traffic, like FTP traffic to go from the local area network uh, of the accounting uh, over to the IT. So you would use something like this to block that traffic between the local area networks. Uh, wide area network, this is, you know, these are interfaces. We will stick with the wide area network interface. This is anything going out to the internet, and this is anything coming in from the internet. So let's go ahead and stick with that. So you have a protocol. So TCP, right? So it, it, there's different protocols to deliver, right? We have UDP, we have TCP, UDP, ICMP, which are going to be echo requests. A lot of the times, um, you know, ICMP packets are going to be used to ping workstations, to ping routers, to ping some device to be able to tell whether it's up and running or it's down. It's a good thing for some cases and it's a bad thing for other cases. Hackers like to use ping requests to uh, different servers, to routers and stuff to see if they're up and running. That way they know they can, you know, if they can attack it or not or if there's a machine there or whatever, if, whether it exists or not. So we're not going to pay attention to any of this stuff right now. Let's you know let's say let's stick to the basics. So we're going to do a TCP packet, okay? Because so right here we have source. Um, so if you wanted a specific machine from inside your network to be able to send requests out, and you didn't want any other machine but that specific machine, you would do source. So right here you can see a single host or alias, or if we had you know a much more sophisticated type of uh, network topology. If there was a specific network that you wanted allowed uh, that wanted uh, traffic from to allow out to the internet, you would select network. If you had a particular wide area network address or local area network address or even a subnet, um, so PFSense, you know, it does have some pretty good um, settings and different configurations that you can do for rules. So we're gonna go ahead and stick with any. So the reason I'm doing any is let's say you know we're a small house. Uh, we have five users inside the house, and we have a router, and our firewall is configured, you know, somewhere in between. We want all the traffic, all, all the uh, all the traffic from all of the different machines inside the house to be able to be sent out. So uh, let's. Uh, you can actually put the IP address of a particular machine in here if you wanted to, uh, but that's not important right now. So what's interesting here is that you actually have source operating system. So for example, uh, let's say that we know everybody in the house has a Windows machine, right? So you can see you have Linux, uh, FreeBSD, NetBSD, open source, Mac OS, Windows, everything Novell. So let's say for example we had five users inside the house and everybody had a Windows, but you knew that there was someone in the house that had a Mac, you know, just that one black sheep has a Mac and you don't want them to access the internet. So we're just not going to write a rule for them. We're just not going to allow. We're just not going to write a rule that says, "Hey, let Mac OS um, systems make requests out to Google.com." So we're not allowed, not going to allow that. So, but we are going to stick to Windows, okay? So in particular, let's say Windows to be more safe. Now, destination. In this rule, we're pretty much saying uh, which websites or what type of traffic is allowed to traverse the network out to the internet. Right, so if you actually go right here, you can see. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yep, this is the uh, the destination. So pretty much it's saying uh, where do we direct the traffic? Where do we allow the traffic to go? And if the traffic does, and if the uh, if the request to the internet does not go along the lines of what we want it to, we pretty much block it. 
So we will do any. Mo most of the times you will see people could leave this as any, and they leave source as any. Um, also destination port. Okay, so right here. This is where I meant to do, uh, meant to talk about instead of that one. But all right. So we have the destination port now. So from the destination port, we want to say, remember we said we we're going to talk about web traffic, right? So this rule is pretty much allowing web traffic. So we can go ahead and do HTTP, and you can see it's going to say from. So usually when you make a request out to a, 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 some type of web page out on the internet, it's going to be an HTTP port on your machine, and it's going to be sending an HTTP um, it's going to be using HTTP protocol out port 80 and uh, and port 80 or to port 80. Okay, so from a two. So uh, we want to keep that HTTP because that is web traffic and that's what we want to allow, right? We can't make that Google. We can't make the request to Google unless we obviously allow web traffic to go make that request. So let's go ahead and keep that there. Now log packets. Um, this is you know th if you wanted to log stuff. You would use this, you know, for security purposes or for references or whatever else you needed it for. You would keep that there. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and not select log just for now because we don't even want to log these things. So if we go to schedule, um, so schedule is really interesting actually. Uh, so let's say that you had, you know, it says right here, leave as none to leave the rule enable all time. Let's say sometimes you actually want to shut down this rule, right? There's a specific time of the day. Uh, you know, this is the rule that allows people to go to the internet. So let's say that it's you know 12 o'clock at night, you know, and 12 o'clock in the morning. You want the kids to go to sleep. You don't want anybody to be on the internet. Uh, this will be the rule that any time after the time of 12 and between between the time of 12 a.m. and let's say 10 a.m., this rule will be disabled. So nobody's going to be able to uh, access the internet because this rule pretty much will not allow internet activity to be uh, initiated unless this rule is active. So this rule can be active within specific times of the day. So you always want to keep your uh, gateway uh, to default. Um, and then description. Description is very important. So we said that this rule we created was to allow uh, web traffic. So we can go ahead and describe this by just doing web traffic rule. And then you can kind of sometimes put the protocol HTTP. Okay. So this is the web traffic rule. And we just do save right here. Now it says this uh, firewall rule configuration has been changed. You must apply the changes in order for them to take effect. You do not want to click up here or anything else, exit, anything like that until you have saved this. So let's apply the change. Okay. So now you can see here we actually wrote our first rule. So this is saying that our protocol that we are allowing users to use is TCP. We're allowing it to come from any source or any IP, any machine inside the network, um, any port on that machine inside the network, any uh, destination, and to make sure that the traffic or the traffic that we're allowing is going to be port 80 traffic, um, nothing else. And the gateway, it's going to be using as any. So the, the anytime you see these asterisks, it's going to mean any, right? Or all. You can say all or any, you know. Um, I think the, the, the I think the, the it's better put as an all. So we got the schedule here. We didn't set any schedule, but the description right here is web traffic rule, and you can see right here this is an allow. So I hope this was a quick, uh, small tutorial, um, pretty short tutorial on how to make a quick rule on your PFSense firewall or any firewall. Um, so if you do have any questions or any comments, leave them in the um, comment section below. And I hope you guys uh, learn from this. I will probably sometime in the future be making a more in detail description as to different types of scenarios on how to make, how to write rules specific to different scenarios. Um, you know, all rules depend on your organization or what you're really trying to accomplish. Every rule is going to be different, and everyone's going to always have different types of rules for different uh, situations. So until next time, folks, see you then.